please stand. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In the waters of baptism, Jude died with Christ and rose with him to new life. May she now share with him in eternal glory.
please be seated. What a wonderful tribute this is to Sister Jude. Of so many members of the community and family and friends and colleagues and co-workers and parishioners gathered here to celebrate a remarkable life, a remarkable woman. We have been so blessed by her presence in this community of Tacoma, of St. Leo, and of far beyond. And her impact and her graciousness and her wisdom have been gifts to all of us. I'm Father Phil Burroughs. I'm the associate pastor here at St. Leo. And I'm joined by Father John Fuchs, former pastor. These things are so wonderful when they work, but it's some, sometimes it's the human peace that gets in the way of how well they work. It is indeed a great privilege for me to welcome all of you, friends, co-workers, those who have in some way come to know Sister Jude. You indeed are very, very welcome and an important part of her life. As well of our, as our sisters here joined uh, in, in this wonderful church that I've heard so much about over my, my years in community, we also are joined by those who are uh, joining us through the streaming. So we have sisters on the East Coast, some of them uh, gathered together, they're set in particular, I am one of them, um, at, at our mother house, Our Lady of Angels. Uh, our sisters, our retired sisters in a Sissy house. We have sisters uh, in Wyoming uh, who are booking and companions, friends uh, who are also joining us. And we all also have sisters in Ireland who are joining us through st streaming and even, even one of her set members who is in Africa. So across the world, we are joined here together uh, to remember this great and valiant woman, uh, Jude. And I also thank you for being part of her life's journey because just as she has, has been so much a part of our own journey in some way, you too have been a part of her journey. And I'm sure she is praying and will continue to pray for each one of us in the way in which we are most in need. So thank you and thank you for being here. Thank you, Sister Celeste. Let us pray. Loving God, it is our certain faith that your son who died on the cross was raised from the dead, the first fruits of all who have fallen asleep. Grant that through this mystery, your servant, Sister Jude, who has gone to her rest in Christ, may share in the joy of his resurrection. And we gather now and pray not only for the community of the sisters of St. Francis, but also for her family members who are here with us. And we ask, loving God, that you will give us peace and hope through your, our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Our first reading will be proclaimed by Sister Peaches de La Paz, OSF. A reading from Paul's letter to the Corinthians. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all fall asleep, but we will all be changed. In an instant, in the blink of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For that which is corruptible must clothe itself with incorruptibility, and that which is mortal 
must clothe itself with immortality. And then this, which is corruptible, clothes itself with incorruptibility. And this, which is mortal, clothes itself with immortality. Then the word that is written shall come about. Death is swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. my shepherd, so nothing shall I want. I rest in the meadows of faithfulness and love. I walk by the quiet waters of and truth, my spirit shall sing the music of your name. Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death. Thank you. 
who come to me will have an eternal life. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. May the Lord be with you reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, he will sit upon his glorious throne and all the nations will be assembled before him and he will separate them one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will place the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. A stranger, and you welcomed me. Naked, and you clothed me. Ill, and you cared for me in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him and say, Lord, when do you see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you a drink? When did we see you a stranger and welcome you, or naked and clothe you? When did we see you ill or in prison and visit you? And the king will say to them in reply, Amen, I say to you, Whatever you did for one of these least brothers of mine, you did for me. Brothers and sisters of mine, the gospel of the Lord. Our homily today is going to be given by Sister Christine Still of the Franciscan community, but also a very important leader here in our parish community. Mystery. Our reading from 1 Corinthians has Paul telling us to listen as he has a mystery to tell us. Life is mystery. Death is mystery. Eternal life is mystery. He goes on to say that we will not sleep, but in a twinkling of an eye, we will be changed, transformed, and the dead will be raised. This is how Jude entered eternal life. One of our sisters, Sister Esther Anderson, was sitting with her and Mary Ellen Casey, a very close friend, came into the hospice room around noon. Esther stood to greet Mary Ellen as we continued our vigil with her. At that moment, Jude was transformed. She breathed her last breath here on earth and began her eternal life. It was in a twinkling, a blink of an eye. We usually speak of earthly death as an end. And it is an end to this portion of our journey. But it is not the ultimate end. It is only a transition a change in how we are present, a transformation in how we live. 
We experience numerous transitions and changes during our earthly life, beginning with conception. We develop, we grow, we are born into this world. We are all familiar with the changes we encounter throughout life. Growth, friendships, education, skills, injuries, work experiences, relationships, spiritual growth, eldering, and so much more. Sometimes we are aware of the changes and we even choose some of them. While at other times, they just seem to happen to us and they sneak up on us. And we wonder how we got to be a certain age or when our knees started creaking. But most of these transformations are still mystery. Our faith tells us that the transition to eternal life is just that, not the end, but a transition into a continuation of life, just in a different and eternal way. We begin the next phase of our life with God. As earthbound humans, we don't understand all that this means. So it remains mystery. Jude and I had a conversation about a week or so before she went into hospice. She said, Tina, I don't know what it'll be like. I had just arrived at Marion House and asked her to put it into a little context for me in order to fully enter into the conversation with her. She said, I don't know what it will be like to die. I took a deep breath and considered all of our sisters and so many others that she had sat vigil with and journeyed beside as they transitioned from this life to eternal life. I said that in spite of all the sisters and others she had accompanied on this transitional phase of life's journey, each one is individual and unique. We continued the conversation for a few minutes, not really coming up with a clear answer or description. The psalm we just sang attempts to grasp this transition this mystery. We beg to be shepherded, to be accompanied, to be companioned as we make this change. We seek to put words to the transformation in the relationship with God, a transformation that really is beyond our human capacity to fully understand even with all the theological and spiritual terminology we have at hand. We acknowledge fear, our desire to be faithful and at peace, and to be raised up. We reach for comfort and hope in God's companionship on the journey. We had several moments with Jude as she prepared for her last few steps here on earth. She attempted to communicate with us. She was too hot. She couldn't breathe. She wanted ice chips. And then communication became more subtle and more difficult. She attempted to say something to Esther just before she died. And Esther really tried to understand what Jude was saying. And then Jude breathed her last on Holy Thursday, the feast of the Eucharist, which was so deeply meaningful for her. Jude, with God, chose the day for this mystery. 
I too wonder, as many of us do, what will it be like to die? Jude isn't coming back to tell us. Today's gospel tells us that at death the Son of Man will come in his glory and that the angels will be with him and he'll be sitting on his glorious throne. This is Matthew's image. Was this what Jude experienced? As the gospel continues, we are told that the sheep and the goats will be separated. The sheep will be directed to enjoy their inheritance that was planned for them from the beginning, before they were even born. And it goes on to explain why the Lord is rewarding them. My ponderings over these last couple of months since Jude's diagnosis, progression of the cancer, and finally her transformation to eternal life leads me to this. God's throne here on earth was filled by Jude. A servant. God's hands and voice and feet as St. Teresa had described. It was a chair beside a sister's bed, a bench in the garden at St. Francis' house, a seat in the RV at the ICE detention center here in Tacoma, or a leather office chair in a boardroom at Virginia Mason Franciscan Health. God spoke and acted through Jude as she fed the hungry, clothed the naked, welcomed the stranger, accompanied the dying, and reminded the health system to care for those who are poor. And by doing all of this, she did this for God. We have been telling stories for several weeks, recalling with and about Jude situations at St. Leo's Food Connection, or the status of the man who sleeps under the bridge on 6th Avenue. We've told stories last night, and we will continue today, and probably for a while longer, of her cleaning out St. Francis House. <coughs> or greeting the migrants at the hospitality bus after they were released from detention, or gardening at the apartment or St. Anne's so all could enjoy God's beauty. She tended our wounds, fed us, turned on the heat in our rooms, provided transportation to the airport and doctor's appointments, sat on the Afghan Family Committee here at St. Leo's, provided space and hospitality at St. Anne's for celebrations and meetings, and so very much more. She was God's presence on earth. She tended to our brothers and sisters, and so tended to God. Jude, how we enter into eternal life is a mystery. But it is not a mystery <coughs> as to how you got there or how we will eventually arrive ourselves. You did all of this for the least of us. We look forward to the day when you will greet us and companion us as we enter the mystery of eternal life. We know you are no longer in pain and that you are already advocating for us all remaining here. You have been transformed and you have transformed the way you will continue to care for us 
and watch over us. Enjoy the blessing of this mysterious reward. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Chris. Please stand. Our prayers of the faithful <clears throat> will be led by Sister Ann McNamara and Rose Chandro. Our response will be, Lord, hear our prayer. For Sister Jude Connolly, who has been called from this life to the next, that she and all who have died may enjoy the peace and happiness of heaven, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the deceased relatives and friends of Sister Jude, especially her parents, brother, and nephew, that the peace and happiness of heaven may be theirs forever. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For Sister Jude's family and, and colleagues who worked alongside Sister Jude in her ministries, that they may be given hope, peace, and consolation treasuring the memories they have of her. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who mourn, that they may be assured of Christ's closeness to them in their sorrow and find strength and comfort through their faith in Jesus, our risen Lord. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear Lord, our prayer. Hear our prayer. For all the sick and suffering, that they may be filled daily with courage and hope, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who work with the sick and the aged, especially our Virginia Mason Franciscan health employees, that they may be granted the grace, patience, and understanding needed to continue their compassionate care. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. And let us take a moment now in silence to take our own prayers and concerns to the Lord in hope. Gracious and loving God, on this day when we celebrate the life of a wonderful woman and your disciple, we pray that you will hear all of our prayers and answer them in your wisdom, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Our gifts of bread and wine today are going to be brought forward by Sister Jude's cousin, Rosemary Nordstrom, her husband, Phil, and their daughters, Heidi and Carla and Jenny Lozano.
Pray, my sisters and brothers, that our sacrifice will be acceptable to Almighty God. Loving God, we pray that these gifts of bread and wine will become for us the body and blood of your Son. And as you feed us, may we feed the needy of our world through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us lift up our hearts. Lift up the Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him the hope of resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for us in heaven. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Typically, we remain standing for the Eucharistic prayer, but if you need to sit, please feel free to do so. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way when supper was ended he took the chalice and once more giving thanks he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by your Holy Spirit. And remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Paul, our Bishop, and all those who minister in your name. Remember your servant Jude, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that she who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. And remember also all of our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. And have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, 
we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. For it is through him and with him and in him in the unity of the Holy Spirit that all glory and honor are yours, almighty God, forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. And Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. My sisters and brothers, may the peace of the Lord be with you all. As Catholics, we believe that the bread and wine have become for us the body and blood of Christ. And in receiving the Eucharist, we become one with Jesus and one with the needs of our world. If that is not your faith tradition, but you'd like to come forward at communion for a blessing, please put your hand over your hearts and the Eucharistic minister will give you a blessing. Now here at St. Leo's, we have gluten-free hosts, which will the Eucharistic minister standing right in front of Sister Jude's urn will be the person who has those. And there'll be two bread stations here and two cup stations behind. And we do things a little bit differently because our pews are arranged differently, so the ushers will guide you, but we start with the back and we move forward to the front. And so they'll be coming around and leading you this way and then going back that way. Okay. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. And blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. 
but only to say the word and my soul shall be healed. And may the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus bring us all to life everlasting.
gives Creator, everyday God, loving Maker, oh Jesus, you shaped us, oh Spirit, recreate us, come be with us in your presence, everyday God. Are gathered, oh Jesus, you have called us, oh Spirit, to restore us. Come be with us, life all ages, every day, God, love of all loves, oh Jesus, hope of all. Light of all lights, come be with us in our resting every day. Come in our rising, oh Jesus, in our hoping, oh Spirit, in our waiting. In our dreaming, every day God, in our daring, oh Jesus, in our searching, oh Spirit, in our sharing, come be with us, God of laughter, every day God, God of sorrow, oh Jesus, hope and shelter, oh Spirit, strong and patient, come be with us, way of freedom, every day God, star of morning, oh Jesus, Timeless healer, oh spirit, flame eternal, come be with us. Word of gladness, every day God, word of mercy, oh Jesus, word of friendship, oh spirit, word of challenge. Come be with us, gentle Father, everyday God, faithful brother, oh Jesus, tender sister, oh Spirit, loving Mother, come be with us, our beginning. Every day, God, our unfolding, oh, Jesus, our enduring, oh, Spirit, journeys ending, come be with us, alleluia, every day, God, now and always, oh, Jesus, alleluia, oh Spirit, through all ages, come be with us.
gracious and loving God, we are grateful for the power of the Eucharist, which draws us together as a community of faith and feeds us for the journey ahead and helps us to be united with all those who have gone before us. And so at this Eucharist, we are so grateful for the example, the faith, the generosity, and the compassion of Sister Jude. We're so grateful for all those times, all those many days when she came forward herself to be fed by the Eucharist and to share God's love in our world. And so as we celebrate her life, may we follow her example through Christ our Lord. And as soon as our ministers return, Sister Pat is going to lead us in a eulogy, a reflection on this life of this woman who has touched us all. And I know there are many more stories to be celebrated and we'll have that opportunity in the reception following at the Bix next door. Sister Pat. Well, as Sister Chris has said, we walk in mystery today. The mystery of the fragility of life, the mystery of life after death, the mystery of the purpose, the impact of our individual lives, the mystery that all that is left of Jude's physical presence among us is held in this very small urn. That her spirit is free at last and yet is still accessible to us. Our relationship with Sister Jude is different for each one gathered here. For Kelly and for Kelly's daughter, Haven, who is not able to be here, she was Aunt Judy. For Rosemary and her family, she was Cousin Judy. For some, she was a loved colleague and friend. For others, she was a respected hospital board member whose wise mentorship and unfailing concern for the poor was an inspiration. For some, she was a fun-loving and dedicated volunteer at St. Francis House Meal Program or cloth and Clothing Bank, or at St. Leo's Clothing bo Boutique for the Homeless, or Food Gleaner on Fridays and School Lunch Preparer at the Food Connection on Tuesdays. For others, she was the home visitor bringing communion to the home, homebound. For our secular Franciscans, she was the gracious hostess who welcomed them warmly to St. Anne's home each time they came on their, for their monthly meetings. For our Franciscan companions, she was a faithful presence. And for our Franciscan sisters, she was the beloved sister who shared community with us. For each of her, to each of her relationships, she brought a genuine caring, a deep desire to live the gospel, and a fun-loving spirit. Some of that spirit is reflected in the photos in the worship aid. And for this and for this liturgy, I would like to take take you on a little tour of those photos. So if you want to take a look at your worship aid. Some of you might need to share.
In the first photo, you will see Sister Jude along with Sister Chris and advocating for immigrants and refugees. She walked the gospel talk about this cause when she volunteered at Aid Northwest Welcome, Wa Welcome Center, just outside the detention center on the Tide Flats. She was there to help um, newly, re newly released inmates as they were sent out into the street alone um, to help them find a way to family and friends. You'll find a touch of her humor in the photo on the next page. Someone had gifted her with a mask with St. Jude's image on either side. <laughs> she is modeling it here and trying mightily to strike a super holy, super holy pose to go along with it. The next photo is of Sister Jude at her Tuesday ministry of making school lunches at the Food Connection. Feeding people was important to Jude. She demonstrated this by helping out regularly at the St. Francis House meal program in Puyallup. She loved interacting with the program's guests most of whom were from the homeless population in the area. And they enjoyed interacting with her. Her energy and good humor made her a favorite among the meal program's volunteers. And going on, on the third Friday of each month, Jude could be found out on 6th Avenue with other Franciscan sisters and their companions, and the Dominican sisters and their associates, drawing attention to the issue of human trafficking. You see them in the photo at the bottom of that page, holding their signs and waving to attract the attention of passers-by. Sister Jude was not a great lover of technology. <laughs> but she doggedly went about learning to use it for the sake of her many ministries. She carried an old-fashioned flip, flip phone until three years ago. And at that time, on her 80th birthday, the hospital system system gifted her with a more modern smartphone. She claimed that she would use it only for phone calls, which she enjoyed. But before the week was out, she had learned to text, to check her emails, and even to explore Facebook. <laughs> The most wonderful discovery for her, however, was that she could Google just about anything and learn something about it. She was a lifelong learner, and this discovery delighted her heart. It seldom happened that our Sunday dinner conversations would not be interrupted by, oh, let me ask my phone. <laughs> The next photo shows Jude's rather mischievous humor as she found her place in the gathering of sisters in our Tacoma community. You can see the twinkle dancing in her eyes. That humor served her well up until her last days. In Hospice House, on the last evening that she was able to communicate with us, She woke up enough to have a brief and playful ice chip fight with Sister Chris. And as we left her that night, I looked back at her and she was twirling in her hand one of those um, sponges on a stick that patients use to moisten their mouths. Um, 
she was, as she twirled that, that um, sponge lollipop, she was rolling her eyes and grinning that mischievous grin. In the, fi in the final weeks of her illness, Jude showed us how to die gracefully, even as she had lived her life gracefully. The final photo shows Jude hard at work on her laptop. Her hospital board ministry involved many Zoom sessions, and although the techni technology sometimes frustrated her no end, she was determined to make the best of it. She spent hours by reading the tomes of board, board reports, and board members who are here know what I mean by tomes, and participating as fully as she was able in the meetings themselves. There is much more that could be shared about Sister Jude, but I'm afraid we would need to be here for two or three more days, so don't worry. Um, I could speak of her love for the Eucharist, her love for Franciscan spirituality, her watching for God to appear in the everydayness of life, her love of nature and gardening and flowers. But instead, I invite us to ponder the mystery of her life cycle as well as our own. We begin our lives young and strong and filled with energy. And as time goes on, we develop the unique gifts, our unique gifts, and grow in wisdom. In our final years, we grow a bit weary. But the wisdom and influence that we have gathered along the way falls from us as generativity. And eventually, completing what was ours to do, we are finished for this life. This cycle was evident in Jude's life. I invite you to consider this as we read the sunflower poem on the last page of your worship aid. The life cycle of the sunflower is a metaphor for our own life cycle. The sun is the energy of God's spirit flowing through us, the sunflower. The seeds are the fruit of that energy. I think you will recognize Jude in this poem, as well as your own lives, perhaps. You stood tall and strong in the days of your youth your lovely face following the path of the sun, eager to draw its brilliant energy into your own. Summer sun turned toward fall, and the weight of your energy-saturated seeds drove your head down earthward. You bowed down and released your precious gifts sun's energy passing through your own, nurturance for all who gathered at your feet. And then, offering up your last ounce, you yourself wilted into the waiting earth, spent. You, the most benevolent of flowers, speak of an outrageously loving God who also bows down, sp spilling forth creative goodness upon all who gather at his feet. Bold in your beauty, you beckon toward a way of being that reflects the bowing down of that same gracious giver of self. eagerly searching for the source of life, soaking it in, pouring it out, graciously bowing down with the sheer generative weight of it. In waning years, we offer it as wisdom and grace to 
all who gather at our feet. Until that day when we ourselves wilt gently into earth. We thank you, Jude, for pouring out your spirit-filled gifts upon us. Intercede for us from your new place before the face of God. May we treasure the gifts that you have left for us as we honor your memory. May we nurture them as we continue our own journeys and until we too will gently into earth, spent. Amen. Amen. We're now going to have our final commendation, near the end of which the sisters are going to gather from the congregation around the urn and are going to sing a particular song reflective of their spirituality. Then I'll have the final blessing and we'll go over across the way to the Vix for the reception. Please stand. Before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our sister. May our farewell express our affection for her. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet her again when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. Into your hands, God of mercies, we commend our sister Jude in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, she will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed on Jude in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and our sister forever. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
sisters, as God's people, we thank you for your witness, for your faith, for your ministries, for your companionship along the way. And may our loving and gracious God console you and strengthen you to continue to live in hope through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Almighty God bless us, God who is Father and Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. We're now going to leave the church and the vestibule is only so large and the reception is just across the pathway there. So I encourage you to keep moving so that we can gather and celebrate again.